welcome to this week's Run With, where I talk to the fabulous Paul Graham. Otherwise known as Mediocre Marathon Man on Instagram, Paul has a really inspiring story, starting off from his first marathon of 4.25 where he ran for charity, to his current marathon PB of 2.24, a whopping two hours of his marathon time. I joined in with Paul on his session before he headed out to Font and we talked all things running and how that and his running club have given him so much throughout his journey. to run with. How are you today? Yeah, very good, thank you. So we have just, well, you've just done a tempo run, your last tempo run before racing this weekend. We're at the, some might say famous, Rose Inn Loop. Yeah, many, yeah. A, many a marathon session been done down here. <laughs> many a marathon session and I think it's quite a popular place for a lot of runners but anyway we're digressing quite a bit. We've got lovely little snippets of your run. We want to talk now about you and your journey with running. Um, so let's start. How did you get into running? Because your story is pretty incredible. So we'll start at the beginning. Why did you start running? So I started running because my sister entered a marathon and I was like, oh, I don't want to be the second one in my, my household to, to do a marathon. So I entered a marathon as well. It was for charity. So I ran a marathon as my first ever race. And it was four hours 25 I ran. Um, I, I ambitiously went with a four hour pace and went through halfway in like 158 and then very quickly discovered I probably hadn't done enough training yeah. <laughs> to actually run a sub four hour I think marathon. that's a pretty standard <laughs> first marathon yeah. Uh, error. Yeah. I think I'd maybe done like 13 or 14 miles in training and thought, yeah, I'll be fine on the day and then mm. the second half was quite, quite difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and two and a half hours later or whatever of doing a mile of running and then like five minutes of walking That for charity. Yeah. What was your first your first marathon? Uh, Brighton. In Brighton. 2000, 2013. So Quite a tough first marathon. It's, it's yeah. Uh, they sold it to me as flat. It, it certainly it's wasn't. It's not <laughs> flat. It's not flat. And when was that? Yeah, 2013. So. so that's when you you started your running journey. So you're yeah. you're an adult and you just want to beat your sister. Yeah, to, exactly. To the marathon. Yeah. <laughs> Race the money for some charity. Yeah, yeah. Um, now from where you started to where we are today. Yeah. There is. A massive difference. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So you do your first marathon, and you, you struggle with that that first that second half. What makes you then think, do you know what? I don't just want to do this to beat my sister. I actually quite like running. Let's let's have yeah. a go at running. Well, so I really enjoyed that, and I joined my local running club, which is Pontypridd Road, and so I still run for, for, and just got really into it. And then I was like, ah, oh, I think I can do under four hours. Mm. So I went back. And it was about six months later then I ran 356 in Manchester. And I was like, and it was quite, that was like almost like a eureka moment. If you train, you can actually do your target. And then from there, it's just kind of progress, 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 always getting a little bit quicker. And and yeah, now nine years later or whatever. <laughs> so, so I think what is amazing is just how much time you have taken off your marathon. Yeah. Um, so what's your marathon PB? You ran your marathon PB at Rotterdam in October. I did, yes. Yep, and what so was I it? ran two twenty four there. So which two, is like a, a two hour improvement. <laughs> two hours over nine years. I mean that is pretty incredible. Yeah, I think yes, yeah, something that I think is fairly unique. I think there's obviously will be a lot of other people have done it as well, but it's, it's quite unusual when when you sort of like on the start line in a in a group of people that are going to be running in the mid 220s and you're sort of like, oh yeah, my first one was four hours 25. I think it's quite, quite unique. Mm. There's not, not so many people, everyone's just like, oh God, that is yeah. quite, a, quite a different pace. <laughs> yeah, and I think especially like for people, you know, if you do their first marathons in four and a half hours, five hours, like the sub four is, is a massive goal and they, and they hit that and yeah. pleased with that because it is a, a huge achie achievement, but you've just kept going and going and going and yeah. going. It actually sounds, conversely, it gets easier as you get quicker because it's actually less time on your feet. The training's probably harder, 
-hmm. but the actual race day is easier now because you have less time on your feet and I probably equip myself better now than when I was a four hour marathon runner whereas maybe only running three times a week and now it's you know obviously every day more in your zone you're in your element once you're once you're racing you, you know what you're doing and I'm not saying that you wouldn't as a four hour runner but you, you you're only exposing yourself to it maybe three or four times a week rather than every single day <laughs> so let's talk about that then so what do you think have been the big what what's what's what's, what's helped this massive because obviously you've had to work hard you don't just get to a 223 marathon by you know just oh, I'm pretty good at it yeah, you know, we'll just turn up for a marathon and keep showing up to races, and it'll and it'll fall down. And you have to work hard at it. So, where, what has been key for you in chipping away at that marathon time? There's not really one thing. There's a an amalgamation of things. I think the weight loss. I lost quite a lot of weight. I'm quite affectionately known in the local running scene as Fat Paul. We were, we were talking about this <laughs> before we started talking. And it's and it's still stuck to the point where I have it on my Kenya bracelet. You know, yeah. It's, it's, and it's a it's actually something that I quite like to have that sort of tag almost in a it's quite a flippant way but it's it's nice to still have that association and there's been races where I've sort of been in like the lead pack of like like city half marathons and stuff and I've been running back past my club mates who will be shouting Fat from Paul. yeah and it's just yeah. it just makes me smile and it's quite it's quite it's nice to have that identity I suppose and have something a little bit different about you that sort of separates you from everyone else so I, I do actually quite like it even though some people might think, you know, it's almost quite an offensive name, and in a lot of ways it is, but it's also quite nice. <laughs> I'll have to put up, um, you've, you've put a fantastic post up, you're kind of, it's like a transformation Tuesday, but your, your transformation from what you look like as a 4.30 marathoner to what yeah. you look like now, and it is a hell of a difference. So obviously you, you're losing the weight, you're probably more active, I guess, looking after your diet better? Yeah, I think so, although I... You know, my diet's probably not the, the best uh, compared to a lot of people I compete against. <clears> he <throat> sat there with a beer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm definitely an advocate of working hard. I, I, I've been quite lucky with injuries as well, but 4,000 miles a year type thing, you know, just doing lots and lots of training and, and, and working hard and kind of then enjoy work hard, work hard and, mm -hmm. and then enjoy the takeaway on the Saturday night and those types of things as well the beer on the Tuesday after after your session to relax and it's balance the balance yeah. yeah I think a massive part of it is doing running because you enjoy it mm -hmm. I think that's so important for every single club runner is we only run because we enjoy it right we yeah. don't I, I, I certainly didn't get into it for anything more than that it's a it's a hobby and I enjoy the social element, which is why I've stuck with my club, and, and the, I regard a lot of the people within my club as my friends, not just my club mates. So the socialising and stuff is all part of that, mm -hmm. the enjoyment of the sport. And if, if, you, if you get into a point with it that you're not enjoying it anymore, then you've got to question why, why are you doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And, and actually, from a lot of people that I've spoken to that have been really successful in running, enjoyment yeah. has been that, that one factor that has always been there that they enjoy yes. what they do yeah. um and i guess when you're enjoying it then you want to keep running all those miles i mean what you, four thousand miles a year yeah i think that's the sort of like peak and you know this between three and four thousand is probably like the range for the last five years they were just trying to trying to keep the consistency in your training and trying to stay injury free for as long as possible so how quick are you building up to that kind of mileage because um, obviously at the beginning you said you're running what three times a week Yes, I, it was obviously I've done this over nine years, so it's it's not all come straight away. But mm. probably by 2016, so within three years, is probably that's probably when I did my first sort of 80, 90 mile week. And even now, that's the norm. I don't really go much higher than that. Mm -hmm. Now I might occasionally go up to like the low 100s in a marathon block or something. But it's I kind of got to that level within three years, and then it's, but three years is ages anyway. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about adding mileage on. Yeah, and I think that actually shows how patient that you were at the beginning because a lot of people can kind of go, well, okay, I need to run high mileage to be a, a faster runner um, and can kind of just go straight into doing too much too soon, which... Yeah, Rome wasn't built in a day. You've got to, you've got to sort of build it, yeah. build it slowly. And it just comes, it just comes, doesn't it, with time, patience and you'll get there. Although we were talking about your races, you did race a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> in the early, well again that comes down to the enjoyment of the sport though, so yeah. at first 
it was, you know, we're sitting in the Rose Inn now, and this was the place where you'd come in the summer. You'd come here on a Tuesday night, you'd race here, then you'd go and do a, a 10k on a Saturday. Yeah. You'd have a pint after your race here, you'd, you know, and it was all about coming down here with your friends, seeing if you could be better than the last time, and being a bit competitive with them. We yeah, all, I love that. <laughs> that's kind of that's how, it, that's how it all sort of started. And it's yeah. only really the last two or three years. I think since COVID, actually, that was a, a big sort of because we couldn't race for so long and having that sort of opportunity to really do a block and now I sort of race a lot less mm -hmm. maybe I can't I wouldn't imagine at the end of this year I'll have raced more than 10 to 15 times yeah just actually having targets and training for them rather than just being like oh I'm gonna race everything every day <laughs> yeah yeah a little bit of a magpie but I think I think we can all get yeah. a little bit like that and there's nothing wrong with that if you're mm. enjoying it right <laughs> yeah exactly right exactly if the enjoyment's there and you're enjoying doing that then absolutely that that's carry on well I say carry on and do it you carry on and do it as long as you're not kind of risking injury yeah. um let's talk marathons yeah um what so you ran your PB in Rotterdam and yeah. then you were training hard for Paris marathon yeah what happened in Paris? <laughs> I think I just I just got that a little bit wrong. I think mm -hmm. the training. I, I ran Cardiff half the week before, and I I'd had a good race in Cardiff. Yeah, you had a really was, good race. In, yeah, I think yeah. I was ninth in sixty six high, so yeah. I was relatively happy with that. The conditions um, on the day in Cardiff, it's a quick course, but it's not a a mega quick, you know, like a Copenhagen or a Barcelona type course that's really really quick. So I was really happy with that on that day, and then trying to do a seven day turnaround to a marathon was silly yeah <laughs> and I, I kind of knew it was going to be and and it didn't work out and that's i think i i I'd turned up to the race and there was a group that finished in 217 and a group that finished in 221 and i was i was adamant i was going to run under 220 so i ran as like a 219 pace and i'd got to like 30k and I'd not run a K of the race with anybody else. Okay. <laughs> so 72,000 people in this race and I'm running the whole thing on my own. And that's tough. But yeah, so yeah. it kind of just got to me in the end and I sort of binned it off at 32k, which is not not something I like to do. With, there's quite a lot of stigma with not finishing races in my running club, so you kind of got a little bit of stick. But for I it. think <laughs> also, you say there's a bit of stigma, but I do think we need to normalise yeah. a DNF because yeah. if it's not right, then. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the best option is... Yeah, I, I'd, I'd run well off the back of that. I came back and did the 12 stage and yeah. had a relatively good run for myself there. So I was like, I, I, I know, I'm confident I made the right decision at the time. I think I would have been frogging a dead horse at, at Paris. It would have been a real grind and I'm not sure I would have held it together enough to even have got a PV anyway. Yeah. And I think it would have been quite damaging to do that anyway because I wasn't feeling great when it started going and there was still 10k left at that point it's, it's and long. then you've got to think i guess of the knock-on of the weeks after that that if you do complete it yes you've completed yeah. it but then you've got the recovery there could be extra recovery because of any damage that you've done yeah exactly i find for the marathon i can't really train well for like four weeks afterwards yeah i, I don't know if it's, that's the norm I, I think everybody's a little bit different and some people can jump straight back into training but for four weeks i'll be, be terrible on sessions and i just can't run very well and mm. I think the marathon takes quite a lot out of me so yeah I wasn't willing to do that damage on that day for that race because it wasn't r the right place I don't think yeah no I love that and I, I love that you're, you're very open about it and you're, you're talking about it because like I said it'll help other people I mean I know from a personal perspective there's certainly been points in marathons where it would have been a better option to DNF <laughs> yeah um, and so when you hear more people talking about the reality of it and saying actually no it's the right thing to do then it just makes it a bit easier for normal folk to just be like do you know what yeah it might be the right thing for me to do too because like this is coming from a 223 guy now you know yeah but when you're walking down the side of that road with your number in your hand you're thinking oh no what have i done <laughs> yeah no i get it i do get it and then also like you go on social media and stuff after and it seems like everybody's celebrating they've all had an amazing race because of course the people that have done really well are the first kind yeah, of, to, of to talk about it yeah yeah and it can be a little bit of a yeah, sort in the wound it, kind of thing it's, and you're and you're disappointed with yourself on you as well at that point you are like oh no i have not done what i, I just out to do because you've obviously tried to run you thought you could run on that day yeah. and you and yeah at that point you are quite upset about it as well it's quite quite emotional marathons yeah, are emotional they are anyway, emotional they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you, but you put so much into it i mean it's a massive it's it's not just you know like 5k's that you can race quite often yeah a marathon is something that you've got to put week upon week upon week into and you're just focusing on this one event um which you can't do 
every month or you know um and then yeah to for it to not go right is it's tough yeah right so let's forget about paris yeah what's the next goal for you so i'm racing um copenhagen half in okay. september that's yeah. my next sort of big goal although i do have a race this weekend at welsh castles really um the next sort of big goal that is sort of like time based is copenhagen half so not going on a marathon yet just going to gonna, the gonna half, work uh, half and then okay. february 23 i'll do seville marathon okay right that'll yeah that'll be my next marathon then so it's gonna i'm gonna try and take the half time down a little bit first Oh no, I like that. I like that you're coming back, you're working on the, on the shorter stuff. So will there be some 10k races in there as well? Yeah, I'd imagine so. Um, yeah. I'm about to, on some fun Not jealous at all. <laughs> ah, Obviously yeah. the first time round we met, we were in a tan, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now <laughs> I'm very fortunate that Clara's going out there to train, so yeah. I sort of piggyback on the back of it a little bit and, and make the best of what, make the best of it when I can. So we're going to head out there for five weeks and obviously Clara will come back and race the marathon in the Commonwealth Games and I'll try and do a 10k race or something in that period. I've not quite decided what that will be yet, but I'm mm. sure there'll be something on in July, August time. Mm. But then yeah, Copenhagen will be the big target. I want to break 66 minutes there, which is about a 30 second PB for me. Yeah. So if I can sort of take that time down a little bit, yeah. then, then hopefully convert that into a good marathon. And then will so, it be go for a sub 220 again? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. I've changed my coach recently, so, and he's been very successful with other marathon runners, so I'm kind of hoping that it'll help me, because my 10k and half marathon times would indicate that I can run quicker than 2.24, mm -hmm. so I just, I'm hoping that I can now convert those 10k and half marathon times into a marathon that, that I'm even more pleased with the time very proud to have achieved what I've achieved from where I started but I'd love to achieve more. No I love that, <laughs> I love that you can be proud of what you've done and celebrate that but still want more um, and it's interesting that you've, you said you're working with a coach now um, but you were self-coached beforehand we were talking weren't we about accountability about having yeah. that side of it being accountable to somebody do you feel that's helping? Yeah so it comes back to Paris again so I, the decisions I made in the run-up to Paris were really bad and I've self-coached myself up until that point and it's not that I didn't know I was making the wrong decisions. I just couldn't take the, su the like the subjectiveness out of it. I, I just need to be more objective about these decisions. So I've got a coach now. So I'm kind of hoping that it makes me make better decisions, mm -hmm. so that I don't don't lead myself down the wrong path again. And it's not it's not a waste of your training block, but you do kind of think ah, I've not achieved what I set out to do in that sort of three to six month block. And now I've got to start again, for, not from square one, but I've certainly learned a lot from that Paris block, but you, you know, you're, you're not ready to race a PV straight away and you've kind of got to put in the groundwork again. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. It makes complete sense. So what would you say is, you, obviously you've done your 223 at Rotterdam, what would you say is your running career high so far? The, the, the most pivotal, the highest moment that you've had so far? Um, I would say... When I broke 30 minutes for 10k, that's yeah. probably the moment I was, I just was not expecting to run. And it was like 29.38, so it was like quite a bit you under. You probably broke it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like I just snuck under it. In fact, I'd run up to like 29.45, 29.50 pace, and at like, like 8k, I'd realised the pace was actually quite easy. Mm. And just to have another gear to go into when running much quicker than I thought I could run anyway, uh, it's just like... I was quite amazed. I was, and it was, yeah, it was great. I was yeah. So chuffed. That, yeah. that race. What race is that? That was in Speedway as well. Speedway, it yeah. So we're talking. We're very lucky, actually. We've got some amazing kind of routes and races, kind of your grassroots kind of races here. So, like you were saying, we've got the Rosin Loop, which is two mile loop, but there's the four mile race, which is every month over the summer, isn't it? Um, and then we've got the Speedway 10k, which I know a lot of people have raced, a lot of, all the big names have raced and come yeah. and had a go at the Speedway 10k, and that's that's local too. Um, yeah, it's a fast, a fast route. Yeah, it's a really good course. Um, if, if you're um, kind of a pack runner like me, you've got no chance of getting in. You have to qualify to get into the race, yeah. right? There's like, I think it's just like the fastest so many ma men and women is in Yeah, I think they, they sort of accept everyone's applications and then they just sort of draw the line at like 150 push. men or whatever it is that they can take. Yeah, and it's rapid. Yeah. Rapid. Yeah. 
I think it was something like 33 minutes for the men this year yeah. and 40 minutes for the ladies or something. So it's yeah. really quite, quite quick. Yeah, I had a friend raise it and she was like, oh, she said it was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> she just said it was nuts like she felt like she was one of the slower runners there yeah. because it's just so fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, amazing. So that's your high. And low would it be Paris, you would you say? Uh, Oh, there's loads and loads there's in running. There's loads and loads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to go and get him another beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're here all about it. Yeah, there's a lot of lows in running, isn't there? I think that's what makes the high so good there, isn't it? Yeah. Is that you have so many races that you just, even the ones that are just like indifferent, but you've trained really hard for them and you're like, oh, I thought it was going to be better. Mm. But yeah, Paris was not I've only DNF'd a few times and I would always say a DNF is going to be the low. Um, yeah. Worse than a DNS? Oh yeah, I've, I've actually had that in a speed race before I turned up and I, I'd had like a niggle and I was like, I was determined to race it because I was in really good shape but I just pushed a little bit too hard um, and I like, was warming up and I was like, my Achilles is not going to let me get around this race. <laughs> okay, that, that's quite um, a, a sharp DNS and that yeah, should be that's... at the race warming up. Yeah, exactly. I was warming up with like a big in my cup as well and I was like, yeah, that's so tough. that's really disappointing. Yeah. That's not a great moment. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I've had DNS where I've been like ill or whatever. And that's kind of like you're like, you don't know what. But actually being there, that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not the one. <laughs> <laughs> Do not recommend. Just don't just don't go to the. To yeah, the I think that's me being really stubborn though. Like I was driving there and, um, yeah, I had a DNS at London Marathon before that was quite similar, because Clara was racing, as well. So I'd even like gone to the expo and picked my number up and I was like, just in case I wake up and by some miracle in the morning I can run. But I like knew it wasn't going to happen because I don't think I'd trained for like four weeks. No, <laughs> do you know what? I actually, I just thought I did that with Paris. I went to the expo the day before, picked up my bib yeah. and I was like, I'm going to race it. You know, I'm dragging my leg around the expo and I'm like, I'm going to race it. It's yeah. fine. I'll wake up in the morning. I'll feel okay. Yeah, and everybody around me was just overnight. like, do not, you know, just... Yeah don't and then yeah. yeah i ended up cheering then but yeah but going to the i think it's um, i think it says a lot about us as runners i think runners as a breed yeah we're pretty stubborn yeah we're, very stubborn <laughs> yeah we, you know if there's a way that we can get around things then we'll do it yeah you've had such an incredible journey what would be for somebody that's starting off with their marathons and they're starting off maybe running a, a, a marathon for charity and then they realize that actually they quite like running yeah and they want to continue running yeah what would be your advice having been on the journey that you've been on surround yourself with the same sort of people as you that, like join a club join a group that runs find other people who love running whatever it is just that's the way to do it because we're, we're all quite social in, by nature aren't we and mm. that's why we do it and if you if you find people that are like supportive of what you do and they have the same goals and you can mix with them and then you support each other that just brings everybody on together doesn't it yeah that's that's been the main thing for me is my growth is very much mirrored the growth of the club that i'm at and everybody's got quicker and i've sort of been the way from that not me really <laughs> I love that. yeah yeah so just sort of ride the wave and get those people that have the same mindset as you so take the plunge, perhaps go and join a club night. Yeah. Try try a club night, go and speak to like minded people. Yeah. Park run? Yeah, park run. There's yeah. loads of groups out there that it doesn't necessarily have to be a running club. There's so many running groups as yeah. well that that have all got people that also want to run and and then yeah, you'll you'll just find you find people who've got the same things as you and then I've I've obviously worked through groups as well during my running time. I've had lots of different friendship groups and things when you get to a point where training with them becomes more difficult because they've not maybe don't progress as quick as you but you can always find other people and then just just train with them whenever you can <laughs> i think it's quite universal as well like it almost almost doesn't matter your pace and you know like if you want to train with somebody else who's completely different there's always ways around it you oh know? yeah of course and there's just that being able to talk to somebody and the support side of it and just be able to moan about a run or you know what what run are you doing you know yeah. all of that that support i don't need I, I, I like that joining clubs. I, I say, obviously my club. I'm, I'm a bit terrible in my club. I don't go to club nights, but it's it's because it's quite awkward with the kids for me. So it's I think I, yeah. I do get that from when people say, you know, I can't get to to club nights, but there's still you know other options like park run, isn't there? And yeah, yeah, definitely. There's, there's always people to run with somewhere. 
You can find them. <laughs> you, you can find them. You can always spot a runner. We and if not, some... just run with someone down the street. <laughs> or like Paul, just like uh, do a few leg swings by a flagpole. You'll be able to spot them a mile off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, people doing strange things in car parks. Yeah, they, they, they're the sort of people you want to run with. <laughs> you, you can, or, you can, or, can or, uh, buy a Garmin or a watch. You yeah. know, when you're like... Yeah, I think I can see the watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see the Garmin. Yeah. What's um? So what's obviously you got Copenhagen half and then Seville, which well hopefully Seville's a good 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 marathon to do as well as uh, from what I've heard. Yeah, that's extraordinary. I think it's meant to be a very. When will you one. be like? Okay, I'm happy with my marathon time. Oh, I don't know. I I always said I wanted to take two hours off. That was the thing when I when I when I got under like two forty five. That's all. Marathon championship standard. I said right, I want to get two hours off, which would be that sub two twenty five. But I suppose the next logical thing in that would be to halve it. But that's very stretched. <laughs> that's like a two twelve or a two thirteen, and that is a very stretched target. But I always think you might as well have these ludicrous targets, and if you hit them, you hit them. If you don't, you had fun while you tried, right? <laughs> I love that. I love that. So you are about the goals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've got to have, I think, to have targets is kind of what drives you and makes you think, oh, I will go to training and, and do this rather than just go to the pub or <laughs> do something different. Do training then go to the pub. Or do both, yeah. <laughs> Up to the Rose Inn loop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, I love that. I think, you know, with your attitude, you seem so positive and you seem so, um, you just kind of get on with it. But the positivity that comes from you and the enjoyment aspect, which you mentioned, it, it shines through and the whole thing so hopefully you know yeah who hopefully knows? we'll see you there <laughs> yeah but sub 220 is certainly the, the sort of like the short term goal you know to, to get that one ticked off would be really good and then you can think about what comes after that then uh, maybe i go off marathons then maybe i just work on the 10ks and half marathons for a little while because you're still young <laughs> enough right you've still got so much scope with the marathon and yeah yeah i think um even though i'm, I'm potentially not that young i think that because I started running late in the context of like elite runners, I suppose, or sub-elite runners, that, that I'm probably quite a young runner in terms of my legs having that much of a, an ordeal of, <laughs> some, you know, you take some runners who have been running since they were nine years old and they're like yeah. coming up to mid-40s or whatever and you're like, oh, that's a lot of years of three or four thousand miles a year that have gone through the legs and I've probably not got that sort of mileage on me yet. <laughs> okay, so all the elite guys that have got all of that damage in their body. Yeah, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming <laughs> with yeah. his youthful bones. <laughs> yeah, just after this pint. <laughs> so it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you very much for letting me join in and watch your session. It was lovely watching you and Clara work together as well and her little telling off. To you. <laughs> oh, going yeah. A little bit too fast to be <laughs> yeah, with. Um, but I love that, you know, keeping you in check. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Clara's always telling me off for what I do. <laughs> it's teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I think we're gonna go warm up now. A bit cold. But I'll put all of your socials down below. So your Instagram handle. Which mediocre marathon. Man. Yeah, yeah I it'll always be mediocre. Be mediocre <laughs> and fat poor, it'll always be. Yeah, those, exactly. things. those things will never disappear. I love it, they'll never change. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. I really hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. I will be back very shortly with another episode of Run With. Until next time, have a great week and happy running. Mm -hmm.